Hello crafters and welcome back to the Scrapbook Pal YouTube channel. My name is Deepa from Designs by D and today I have a card to share with you that's so incredibly relaxing and it features products that were from the recent release by Honey Bee Stamps. Now the release features a whole bunch of products that are perfect for summer and have a lot of beautiful beach scenes. Now today I am going to be focusing on the Shoreline Scene Builder die set along with the Seize the Day stamp set which has a whole bunch of beautiful beach and um, ocean type sentiments. Along with that, I'll be using a whole slew of Distress Oxide inks and my blending brushes along with a bunch of different types of adhesive, including the Tombow Mono Dot Runner and some stickles. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I'm cutting down my card base or my card panel. This is going to be, I'm making a five by seven inch card. So it's going to be a little bigger than you might be used to. I'm, I know that most people are used to doing a, a two size cards, but I wanted to show you how to use these beautiful dies on a bit of a bigger background. So this is actually four and three quarters by six and three quarters. Now I'm grabbing my oxide inks and I've got them in a whole bunch of different colors. I've got about four or five different colors to create my sunset background. I'm starting off with some blueprint sketch and this is gonna be um, focused at the top of the card. And then what I'll do is I'll add some of this wilted violet and this is just gonna blend into the blue to create a bit of a rainbow effect and to fade into the sun, which is gonna be on the shoreline. Now, if you're one of those people who hasn't quite tapped into blending or ink blending yet, I do recommend using these oxide inks because they blend so nicely. And when you are blending, go ahead and put on your first color, then put on your second and go back with the first color to kind of blend it out to, to kind of get rid of that harsh line between the two colors. So that's all I'm doing here. I continued on after the wilted violet with some scattered straw and mustard seed. And then finally, I'm going to add some spice marmalade, which is going to be the real orange area of my sun. So I'm taking it down to where I'm going to have my shoreline. You could have that anywhere on your card. I'm going to take it about two thirds of the way down. And I've created a bit of a circle in the center with the spice marmalade. That's where I'm gonna be placing my sun and that's why I did it like that. So you can see the final effect is beautiful. Now keep in mind as that dries, it's gonna even out a bit more as well. So now I've gone ahead and grabbed the actual shoreline pieces. So this is what's gonna make up the water and the clouds and I'm just cutting them out using my Sizzix Sidekick here and some white cardstock. So I'm basically gonna be cutting everything out of white cardstock and then adding ink to it. I find that this is a great way to save on money. If you don't have a bunch of different colored cardstocks, this is all you need to do to get the colors that you want. And not only do you save money, but you can get the colors that you want based on the inks that you have, rather than having to kind of search through different cardstocks and find the exact colors you need. So I'm grabbing Uncharted Mariner, um, this was the most recent color released by Tim Holtz, so I'm ready to use it. I actually haven't used it yet. This is the first time and it looks absolutely gorgeous. And as Uncharted Mariner works very well with the Honey Bee Stamps release because it is an ocean or seaside release. So um, the first two pieces that I added ink to are actually the little ripples that would occur in the water. You could do those a different color, but I decided to keep it the same. And then I'm going to the actual water portion of um of this set so that's the actual dye that's going to be the main body of water and i'm adding some mermaid lagoon to it so i did want to add this different color just to kind of give it a bit of depth so my main color of the water is the mermaid lagoon and then the uncharted mariner becomes kind of like the deeper part of the water or the shadow part of the water now in this case your shadow is actually going to be whichever part of your die cut is going to be closer or farther away from the sun. So anything closer to the sun is gonna be light and anything that's probably closer to you or to the bottom of the panel is gonna be darker. Now I'm also gonna add some ink using some iced spruce to the bottom of these clouds just to give it a little bit of depth as well. Remember we're heading into the nighttime with this, um, 
with the scene. So you're going to want to add something and not just keep them white. These are all of the die cuts. I've actually gone ahead and cut them all out in white. And as I mentioned, I'll be adding different colors to them. So as I do this, I have this um, scrap piece of paper. It's just a scrap piece of cardstock. I, I folded it to use for some embossing earlier on. I, I love um, keeping these things and using them over and over again so that I'm not wasting things. I added some washi tape here. Um, the sticky side up and kind of took off a bit of the stickiness so that my die cuts don't get completely stuck to it. And I'm going to be sticking these palm trees to them. Now, I normally use the negative die cut just like I did in, in the first bit with the bodies of water to add ink, but I wanted to show you a different way you could do this in case you forget and throw away those negative die cuts and can't kind of retrieve them. So this is another way to do it. I'm attaching it to the washi tape and then I'm just taking my ink and gently adding it. I've added some pine needles to those to the greenery on those palm trees and then I've also got my other pieces of greenery. So the set has a whole bunch of little bits. These are like little fern pieces. It's got some little pieces of grass. So I'm just adding some more of the pine needles to it and you'll notice I'm choosing darker colors and the reason why is it's a night scene. Well not night but evening so you're going to want to have something a little darker to kind of offset the sun and create contrast. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab some espresso and add it to the bottoms of these trees. And you'll see these colors, they're, they're darker considering all the different colors that there are, but they're not dark enough. So I'm actually grabbing some black soot and I'm darkening them up just a little bit more to create that shadow. So once again, I'm placing the black soot in all areas where I think the sun is not really going to be hitting it. And these are the areas that are going to have the shadow and be a little bit darker. So that's basically the technique that I'm going to be using to add ink to all of my little pieces. Keep in mind, this die set has a ton of pieces you can cut out. You can use some of them. You could use all of them. It completely is up to you. So you can see the final look of these pieces. It may look a little weird to you because it does have that darkness to it. But don't worry, once we put everything on the panel, it's all just going to mesh and work well together. So just, just trust me here, okay? So we'll continue and add some, what is this? This is brush corduroy. I've added this to the, I guess you would call them, I don't know, hills of sand that are going to go on the sand portion of our card, the beach portion. And you can see the brush corduroy is, it's a, it's a lighter brown, more of that of sand. So I'm not just going to add this. Of course, I'm going to add the black soot as well to give it that shadowy and darker effect. However, in this case, because the color is so much lighter, I had to add an in-between tone. So that in-between tone that I added was ground espresso. So that just darkens the sand to a darker brown. And then I can add the black more as a shadow. I've also added that to the little cattails that are included in the set as well. And you can see once again, you're kind of wondering, it looks a bit weird. Don't worry, once I put it together, it'll look perfect. So now we'll go ahead and add the spice marmalade and a bit of mustard seed to the sun. And you see that little wavy portion there on the left? That's actually going to be the shine that comes off the water that's from the sun, if you're wondering what that little piece is. Next, I've got all of these other little bits that you can add on to your scene. There are a couple of fences that you can add. I'm going to be adding some Uncharted Mariner to those. There's a little sailboat and a couple of birds. So I basically grouped my die cuts into the same colors that I'm going to be adding ink. And I've just added ink all in one go and that just saves me some time. Just like the other sets, I'm going ahead and adding the black set and Really, it doesn't make it black. It just darkens the color you have as long as you're not, you know, you take off a bit of the black before you add the color with your detail brush. So these are what all those little images end up looking like. And I actually forgot to mention, um, I am using a smaller brush. So these are detailer brushes. There are some of these available by Honeybee Stamps. Um, they'll be linked below. And um, these just make it easier to to add ink to smaller images like this. So for the the chair and the umbrella, I added some aged mahogany and I didn't add like different colors. I kept it the same. Remember, they're going to be shadowed. You're not going to see the main colors. So don't waste too much time doing that. Just make sure that you're adding good um, shadows with your black set. Okay, so I need to finish off my panel. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab that body of water and kind of place it where I think it would go 
I made a line there so I could kind of see where the horizon is going to be, where the sand meets the sun. And now I'm taking that brushed corduroy that we used for the sand and I'm adding it again. I'm not being too um, mindful of smoothing out this color. If it's splotchy, that's perfect because that's exactly how sand would look. So I've added some of the brushed corduroy. Then to tone it down, I'm adding the ground espresso. And you can see I'm adding a lot of it more on the edges. When you do this, it creates a bit of a faded effect. So it's darker on the edges and lighter in the center. And this is what draws your eye in towards the center of the panel. Okay, so now I'm adding those sand dunes here and I'm realizing they're a little dark. I probably do need to add that black soot to this um, sandy portion as well, just to make sure that it all blends in nicely. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that. I'm using bigger brushes here because this is a bigger panel. I don't really need to use the detailer brushes. These big brushes are perfect. And once I add this black to the bottom edge, those little sand dudes are gonna fit in nicely and the whole scene is just gonna come together well. And you can see there's just a little bit of a white portion as well that is actually perfect in this case i didn't actually mean to do it but if you're doing this i do recommend leaving a little bit of light white at the bottom because if you look at sunsets if you look at them online you'll see that this does actually happen because it's a reflection of the sun off of the water so now that we've got everything all inked up and ready to go let's put this scene together now this is probably after putting all the ink on all my die cut pieces, which did take a bit of time, is the most fun part because everything kind of comes together. So I've got three of these palm trees and I'm going to have them hanging off the edge and one mainly in, actually I think I put two mainly in the center there. I used three on purpose because um, if you think about art, there tends to be more of an aesthetic look in odd numbers or odd numbers of three. So I thought that three would work best here. So you can see that part of my creative process, I don't always show this in a lot of my videos, but I thought that it would be interesting to show. I like to kind of lay out my panel so that I know how everything's gonna fit, where it's gonna fit. It also helps with layering so you know what to put down first and what to glue on top. And it gives you an idea of what your scene is gonna look like. So I'm kind of just placing items down. I am not gonna place that sailboat in the sky. It's just kind of sitting there till I'm ready. And I've put this together to kind of map out where my sentiment is going to go. So I've chosen the sentiment I want from the Seize the Day stamp set. And I know it's going to go on the bottom right there. So I've just got to put the scene together in such a way that I know how much space I have so that I can position it properly. So I'm going to go ahead and put together more of the scene so I can make sure that I have enough room for that sentiment and that, you know, all my little bits are going to kind of fit on here. I'm just using some plain barely art glue or liquid glue to place all these down. I'm not really adding too much dimension because there's just so much going on in this image or rather in this scene. So for the sand dunes, I did add a little bit of um, foam tape there just to add a little bit of dimension. And I have them kind of coming off the edge of the panel. I feel that this is important to create a cohesive scene because, you know, when you actually take a picture of a scene, you don't actually get every little portion inside. It just makes it look, look a little bit more realistic. So I'm attaching my umbrella and the little chair. And then I've got all of these other little, fol not foliage, but the little little leafy bits that kind of add some more nature to your beachy scenes. There's two little um, leafy bits along with sprouts of grass and then the two cattails that I'm going to add to the little sprout of grass on the left here. Now usually cattails are probably closer to the water but I felt that I wanted to kind of bring them to the forefront so that there's a variation of items that are here on this um, scene. Now I'm adding my clouds. Again I have one kind of hanging off the edge to make this panel look a little bit more realistic. Now, if you do what I just did and drop <laughs> your die cut onto your panel with the glue, make sure to wipe it off because remember these are oxide inks, so it will change color if you don't do that. So now that I've pretty much got everything where I want it, I'm going to cut off all the extra overhanging bits and then I can work on my sentiment. So make sure to use an anti-static powder tool because I'm going to be heat bossing here with some Gina K um, detail white powder. I'll stamp this out um, freehand using my acrylic block. You can use a misty if that helps you and you really want to make sure it's straight. And then I'm just going to add my powder and heat that up with my heat tool. 
And because this scene is darker, it's got darker colors, it's an evening scene, I decided to use the white um, embossing powder because I thought it would just stand out more, especially on the dark, darker portion of that uh, sand. Now I'll go ahead and attach it to my card base. This is a white five inch by seven inch card base. As I said, this is a larger card. You could still fit most of these elements onto a smaller A2 size card. You probably just maybe can't put as many trees, but it still works nicely. Okay, so since this is a darker scene, it's hard to have highlights. So I have um, a jelly roll, a white jelly roll pen that I'm adding just a bit of highlights to um, the different areas of my images where the sun would be shining. And after this, I'm getting to it, I'm gonna show you my secret for creating such a beautiful sunny glow. And as soon as I saw this set, I had to do this. So um, I've got my white highlights with my pen, but now I've got double the highlights with this sunburst stickles. Also available in the Scrapbook Pal shop, I specifically got this um, bottle of stickles for this card because I thought it would work so perfectly. And once you see it on the card, you will be dazzled. So you can see on the sun and the shiny little bits on the water, it just, it really glistens and actually looks like the sun is shining. I'm also gonna put it on all of the little die cut images around the sun where I think the sun would be shining. And you know, when you have a beautiful, evening scene with a beautiful sunset that sun it glistens on the water and not only does it glisten on the water the water reflects off of everything around it and that glistens as well and that's the effect that I was trying to um, trying to get here with the sunburst stickles so you can see that it's just absolutely gorgeous I'm putting it on everything that I can because I just thought it looks so stunning especially when you move that panel left to right and you can actually see the glitter from this glistening it just it's it really sets the scene and it really makes me want to be on that beach I don't know about you but I love the scene builder builder set so the set is so versatile I've created an evening scene with a nice sunset you could create a daytime scene you could create maybe a nighttime scene and make it even darker. It's completely up to you. Um, an easier way you might want to do the sunset is to have the nice background as a sunset and then just do the palm trees and the stuff that's in the foreground in black cardstock. And that would make it look completely shadowed and would still look really nice. Not only that, but it would contrast your sunset so nicely that the water and the background would just stand out. So as you can see, I've added that stickles <laughs> about everywhere I can, including the water, because that's where a lot of the glistening takes place. And then I've also got these Dress My Craft, um, these um, transparent heart embellishments. And I'm going to add a few of them just around the sentiment here. I, I really can't make a card without embellishments, so I had to add a little something. I just thought those little hearts would just, just create a little bit of pizzazz. So that's the final card that you end up with and I'm so excited about how it turned out. I hope you are too. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that you've enjoyed the tutorial and you were inspired. Everything used today has been listed in the description below and is available in the Scrapbook Pal store and don't forget to like and subscribe. See you guys again next time. Bye.